I've been sitting in this lobby now for about six weeks. I think it's been since I first tweeted out to member of the Bioshock art team, James Sharp, asking whether or not Captain Salty's potato chips are vegan. I promised myself I wouldn't leave this spot until I heard one way or another. In the meantime, I've taken to, uh, really just doing whatever I can to keep myself occupied in order to keep my mind active. I've tweeted out to a few other members of the Bioshock development team, hoping one of them will get back to me eventually. <laughs> Would be really uh, appreciated. <laughs> Anyone. I've gotten into interior design, tried out a few different floor arrangements. It can be frustrating to move things around. Some actually don't move for some reason, but with enough elbow grease, I make do. It's all mainly for display purposes, of course. No real utility or function. If I try to sit in the chairs, they sort of launch around and then I have to set them back up. Sometimes when I get bored of that, I like to stare out the window here and watch the endless stream of luggage that manifests. Um, for exercise, I like to uh, try to push the uh, infinitely burning couch at the bottom of the stairs, um, uh, up the stairs. You can, you can just feel that fat <laughs> melt right away. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've really, I've really settled down here. You could, you could say that I... Oh my god, no. No way. Yes, 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 yes. Huh. Well, I guess that's canon now. After Atlas cleared the door for me, I arrived in the medical plaza and was greeted by... Finding a little motorized turret blocking my path, I'm introduced to the joys of the hacking minigame, which, at a surface level, is an amusing little maze abstraction that breaks up the monotony of gunplay segments for players that like to explore. But below that surface level... Well, we'll get into that later and why I grew to despise these puzzles more than any other facet of the game. After hacking into the tiny turret, it sprung to life as my new trusted guardian. I immediately deactivated it because it might not be fully comprised of vegan components. However, after a few moments of examination and a quick browsing of the Bioshock wiki, I determined that it would be ethically acceptable to bring it along with me. As an automaton lacking sentience, I feel no tinge of guilt should it come to some destructive demise. Which I'm pretty sure it did. Honestly, I just sort of lost track of it because a shiny new toy caught my eye. It almost seemed too good to be true, but there it was. My new best friend, the machine gun. <laughs> Providing me with the first true source of vegan-friendly firepower, the machine gun immediately changed how I played the game and made me a plant-based and ethically sound force to be reckoned with until I ran out of ammo and had to switch back to the wrench. Whatever, I'll start buying more ammo as soon as I can. For now, Atlas has sent me off to get a key card or something from some dude named Dr. Stein, and I wasn't really paying attention. I failed to mention earlier, but I've been hallucinating these strange apparitions every once in a while. If anybody has any ideas as to why, I'd appreciate input in the comments below, and I don't want to hear any bullshit concern trolling about it being related to my diet, I ate a very well-balanced and supplemented diet to cover all of my bases. Using the machine gun as my sole range damage source proved to be pretty taxing on my wallet, seeing as how I suck ass at aiming. On top of that, the game was purposefully placing areas that could potentially hold extra cash behind blockades that require plasmids to access, as if it's explicitly taunting me for being vegan. I ran into another new auto-consumable, coffee which, unfortunately, I'm going to have to assume contains cream or creamer of some sort, seeing as how it doesn't state otherwise. Luckily, all coffee does in this game is restore Eve, so I don't have any use for it. I eventually found a small room containing yet another plasmid the game was going to force on me in one way or another. Yet another non-vegan action we're forced to make to progress. Look, it even tries to bait you into using the plasmid, like, ooh, look at all the spilled oil on the ground. Wouldn't you like to see the splicer burn alive? What sort of absolute sociopath does this game think I am? I mean, yeah, that would be pretty based, but I'll just stick with the wrench. 
Anyway, I melt the ice to progress. That's another non-vegan action for those keeping score at home. Another consumable that I'm now realizing I've failed to mention so far, bandages. While they would be extremely useful, there's a very high likelihood, based on real-world counterparts, that they're not vegan. So I've stuck to avoiding them. Now, you may be rightfully thinking, if that's the case, well, what about first aid kits? You're using those, aren't you? They've got to contain bandages. I would reply with, Hey, we're just trying to have a good time, Nark. Why do you want to destroy us? But in reality, I'm choosing to use them for two, maybe three reasons, all of which admittedly involve some possible leaps in logic. Number one. I could, much like the potato chip cold opening to this video, try hunting down members of the Bioshock development team, holding them at wrench point, and asking them to list off what ingredients are in the first aid kits. And that would be funny, to some people. Probably not them. But we can also operate under the assumption that my character, being a reflection of my own wishes, would pick out and choose which parts of the first aid kit he could comfortably use. Sure, I could concede that not using the entirety of the first aid kit, perhaps I would receive diminished returns in the form of health recovered. Unfortunately, I have no basis as to how much less health I should receive, and more importantly, I don't even know how to open the damn texture files. Do you think I'm going to figure out how to mod the game? This is a certified hood classic. Number two. Let's look at the alternative to using health kits. Hello. And the timing couldn't be more perfect for that, because very briefly after melting the ice, I proceeded to get shot in the face by about 18 rockets, and then piss off a security camera, causing a swarm of flying turrets to chase me down to my eventual death. And then, to my surprise, my body spontaneously regenerated in what is known as a Vita Chamber. Vita Chamber? I don't know. Let's take a look at what these Vita Chambers actually are. Vita Chambers, born June 10th, 1993, is a Canadian singer and songwriter. She's best known for her hit sing- Wait, what the hell? What am I reading? Oh shit, my bad. <clears throat> Vita Chambers are devices that resurrect the player when they are killed. Vita Chambers are placed in convenient locations throughout Rapture so that a revived player will not have to travel too far to continue the battle. When the player is revived, it will be given a considerable amount of health and eat. Oh no. The player does not have a fixed number of lives, so the Vita Chambers can be used without limit. We don't know exactly how this thing works. What we do know is this. 1. They restore your Eve, which we've established is non-vegan. 2. We know they use plasmids, which we've established are non-vegan. 3. I don't like dying because it makes me feel like I'm bad at the game. I mean, I am bad at the game, but I don't like to be reminded of that. For these reasons, running a cost-benefit analysis, I'm going to continue using first aid kits. It is humorous, for the purpose of this video, to treat everything in the terms of strict absolutes for comedic effect, but in the real world, you're often faced with decisions where there are no vegan options, and it's up to your own moral compass to decide which path to take. Huh. I'm in way over my head. I'm going to include this whole bit here as one of the non-vegan actions the game forces upon you, but technically I could just get good and not take damage to be a better vegan. Uh, where were we? Oh, when I stepped out of the Vita chamber, I walked right into a new weapon. Shotgun! But before I had a chance to properly examine it, the lights went out and I was thrown into a huge fight with a bunch of splicers that once again, drained all of my machine gun ammunition. And it turns out the grip is made from leather. So another gun I can't use. Yet again, I find a suspiciously placed plasmid that just screams, you're going to have to inject me to get past an obstacle. You need, need me. Until I find that obstacle, I'm not going to inject it. Some dumbass decided to stand behind the guy with the machine gun. <laughs> I got my revenge on the rocket turret from earlier, in potentially the least effective way possible. Finally remembering what I came here for in the first place, I set off to Dr. Steinman's quarters. 
but immediately I was forced to turn back when that inevitable obstruction requiring the telekinesis plasmid decided to rear its ugly head, prompting another forced non-vegan action. Followed by another one. The tedium of fighting mechanical opponents while out of ammo really started to set in at this point. Typically you can handle them quite readily with a combination of one of your many ranged combat options along with using the electrobolt plasma to stun them. But for the vegan who can't afford to constantly restock on ammunition, I began relying on a bizarre strafe and smack strategy which, while very tedious, gets the job done eventually. After much delay, I confronted my target in this area, the fabled Dr. Steinman, a once accomplished surgeon who, after prolonged atom abuse, lost his grip on reality and began delving into the world of forced avant-garde plastic surgery. It should be pretty obvious at this point, considering that I've murdered basically every NPC that I've encountered so far, that Dr. Steinman and I will likely come to inevitable blows. Unlike the other individuals caught in the path of my vegan crusade, however, Dr. Steinman is someone who I specifically set out to hunt down. Get the fuck out of my room and play Minecraft! This scenario, similar to the bear self-defense analogy I brought up earlier in the video, feels like a bit of a moral gray area. I am, when you strip the situation down to its core, stepping into a mentally unstable man's residence to take one of his possessions. There's no conceivable way that this could end in anything but bloodshed, and that doesn't quite sound like self-defense on my part. I don't bring this up to determine whether or not I'm going to fight him. That decision is a non-issue at this point, as I'm required to in order to complete the game. Rather, I bring it up to determine whether or not I should add this to my growing list of forced non-vegan actions. And I don't think I will. Consider that, when confronting Dr. Steinman, you find him actively mutilating a living canvas, knowing that he's obviously done so before many, many times, and will very likely continue doing so in the future. Consider that, he removes any possibility of non-violent de-escalation by immediately opening fire on you with his machine gun, an important tool that any good surgeon obviously keeps in their OR. In this specific scenario, the context being, I am a confused man in a turtleneck, trapped in a collapsing underwater city surrounded by ravenous junkie libertarians, and a monster serial killer who tortures people for art is impeding my escape? No, I don't believe that killing Dr. Steinman counts as a non-vegan action. If you disagree, I would love to hear your reasoning in the comments. Not only so that it verifies someone invested the time to watch this video, but because it helps with the YouTube algorithm or something, and at the time of making this I have less than 30 subscribers. After looting Steinman of his emergency access key, I backtracked to get the hell out of there, but due to faulty infrastructure, a tunnel collapse blocked my path and I was forced to take a detour to my next ethical dilemma. I come upon the scene of an unnamed Discord moderator, actively making some unsavory moves towards one of the users on their Minecraft channel. And after he's dealt with, I'm forced by the game to make the decision between rescuing or harvesting this little girl. Bioshock, according to Wikipedia, has received praise from critics for its morality-based storyline, which more or less boils down to this specific set of binary decisions save the little girl and get a slightly smaller reward up front and a happy ending cinematic, or kill the little girl and get a bigger reward up front and a scary mean ending cinematic. Or some dumb mix of the two where you get the second ending but the narrator sounds bummed out. For a vegan, however, there is no ethical choice here. In the bad or harvest option, you kill the little girl and extract the sea slug implanted in her body and harvest it to gain additional atom. Two pretty obvious non-vegan actions at once. In the good or rescue option, you use a plasmid given to you by Dr. Tenenbaum, the creator of the Little Sisters, to extract the sea slug from their body and convert them back to a state of normal little girl. This choice isn't vegan either because it both requires the use of a plasmid and also kills a sea slug. And, as we've seen with a lot of things in this game, there's no option to merely ignore the choice and continue on, as the way forward remains sealed until we choose one or the other. While neither option is vegan, both would incur two non-vegan actions, so taking the literal lesser of two evil choices, I chose to rescue the little sister, receiving a small amount of atom that I will never be able to use, and opening the doorway to continue to my original destination. 
But before exiting, I took a quick browse of what I could spend this atom on if I were willing to commoditize and exploit animals for my own gain. God, that health upgrade would be awesome right now. En route to the locked off bathysphere with my new emergency access key, I spotted a wandering big daddy. In a normal playthrough, these guys provide you with a fun challenge, a bunch of resources on their corpse, and a little sister to either harvest or rescue for more Adam. In a vegan playthrough, you just sort of ignore them. They aren't actively hostile unless you pester them, so I don't nope. think it would be very vegan of me to initiate combat just for some additional resources. Also, they're very armored, and I don't want to blow through all of my ammo on them just to go through a quarter of their health. With the emergency access key obtained from Dr. Steinman, my path was finally clear to access the bathysphere that would connect me to the rest of Rapture and allow me to meet up with my navigator, Atlas. In just these two levels I've completed so far, I've already been forced to commit eight non-vegan actions, and I fear that there may be even more to come. As I step inside, preparing to set off for Neptune's bounty, my next destination, the game stops me, telling me that I need to go back and get the Atom from the little sister that I just left behind. It tells me that I need Atom, that it will be very difficult to survive without it. But I will not falter. For me, this isn't just a challenge run. This is a lifestyle. This is who I am. Shitposting, of course. I'm, I mean, veganism too, but it's like, it's like one tick down from shitposting, and that'll always be at the top of the list.